Hello everyone and welcome to my art studio. My name is Miriam and I'm an artist living in Denmark. And if you are from Europe like me, you're probably experiencing a heat wave just like we are here in Denmark. So I'm here in the studio sweating a lot and drinking a lot of iced coffee. But let's go on with what we are going to paint today. Uh, we are going to paint this beautiful little bird and it's quite a quick painting um, and it's very beginner friendly so i hope you will enjoy here's the material list and we start with wetting uh, the whole page and those fly annoying fly then who wants to be in the movie but um, I begin with wetting the page and um, I go around the bird because I don't want the bird to, to get any color on to begin with because I'm starting with the background. And so make sure that you have the water uh, all over the place so there will, won't be any dry places because we want the paints to flow together uh, here in the beginning. And then we put some color in the page and this is the olive green and I just put it on randomly because I want a blurry background. I also Dab in some clean water to make some effect in the paint. Uh, that looks very nice. And here's the dark green, I think. Um, and you can mix a green with a paint gray to get a dark green if you don't have it in your palette. And I just wipe some of the water away in places where there's too much water. And I just go and uh, dab in the colors. And I'm uh, careful around the bird because I don't want the background color to bleed into the bird. And uh, there's some more green here. And then I put in some table salt because that can give a very good effect in the painting. But actually I found out that the paint was a little bit too wet, so I didn't get quite the effect I wanted. But as you can see now, the painting has dried. Um, there's a little effect, but not that much. So you have to find the right time to put the sole on. And now I wet the bird and I begin with the chest of the bird and I put in the orange color. Just dab it in. And uh, I put in a darker color uh, on the lower part of the chest. And now I paint, uh, put in a very watery mix of paint gray. And I just go around the bird and see where to put the colors. Um, this is quite a loose painting and I don't mind the colors blending together. This is burnt umber. Um, and you have the reference to your left so you can see where the colors are to be. And I also make some thin lines with my the tip of my brush. Um, uh, everything is wet right now so it, it will blend, blend together. For the bird's feet, I uh, put in a darker mix of the paint gray. And now it's on to the rock. And I dab in color the paint gray. And also a bit of the orange, because rocks are often more than one color. They have small other colors in it. <laughs> Now I dry everything off because I'm not very patient. So that's an idea if you are unpatient like me. And now 
when everything is completely dry, I go in and paint some details on the bird. And I begin with the chest of the robin. And I put in some more orange colors and uh, the light hits the chest of a bird. It has uh, many uh, orangey colors in it. Uh, so um, I dab in different orange colors. Um, in the material list, the colors I suggest are just suggestions. If you have a, a nice big palette with many colors, you can just go grab some orangey, brownish colors and dab them in, into the birds. And I try to uh, let the first layer shine through a bit. And now I decided that the chest was a bit too colorful, so I lift off some of the paint and I do that with a clean, damp brush. Then I dry it off in a towel and I lift off some more paint. And now I'm back at the rock again. And I just uh, mix a darker mix of the paints gray and dab it in to the rock. And you know, it doesn't take so much to uh, give things a good effect. So you don't have to sit and sweat over it for many hours. And now I put in some thin lines where the wings are and I try to follow the lines from my um, pencil sketch and this brush I'm using is quite pointy so it's good for making some thin lines with but if your brush is different you can grab a smaller brush or a liner brush to do the job. Now I put some dark paints gray into the eye of the bird and on the uh, lower part of the beacon of the bird. And when you paint things, it's good to uh, think about where you think the shadows are on whatever you are painting. And then put in some darker colors there. And if you have a reference photo, you can just study it and see where all the shadows and darker colors are. But uh, it would be a good advice to take it little by little and build up the painting uh, because if you go in too dark from the beginning it can be hard to uh, get the lightness of the watercolor back again so perhaps it's better to take them layer by layer and then put in darker colors uh, if you look at the painting and see you think it needs something so go in with a even darker uh, burnt umber and just uh, make the wings more 
uh, visible or the contour of the wings and and just go around and see where it could need some darker colors um, and this is something you will learn uh, with experience um, it takes some time to, time to to find out where it's a good idea to put in colors and where not to put in colors so practice 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 and here i have picked up a very small brush and i want to refine the eye some more um, because um, some details are very good to have in the painting um, and the eye is quite important on the bird I think so I just go in with this little uh, brush and also makes the contour around the beacon and uh, in some places of the bird um, because it really makes the bird pop out from the background And here I just go in with the last details on the bird. Now I didn't think the salt would do quite what I wanted it to in the background, so I grab one of my stencils and my toothbrush and then I go in and make some light beams. <laughs> I would call it and I just uh, take a paper towel and dab where I just wash the paper with the toothbrush and I um, think that would give a nice effect in the painting although it's a bit more light and I just go around and look at the painting where I think it needs a little something and um, that's uh, what I like about stencils that you can use them like that. And there you go, we are almost at the end of this tutorial. I'm very happy that you had time to watch it and please give this video a like and if you are interested in more videos please subscribe to my channel it really means a lot for an artist and if you hit the notification bell you will know when the next video has been uploaded remember to use a hairdryer when you take off the masking tape because it can really tear the paper badly so bye for now and see you in another video